I'm going to be making a bruschetta topping. So tomatoes, tomatoes and cucumbers. That's today. Got some basil here. Got some red onion. That's what we're trying to make right there. And got some lemons here too. Look at these tomatoes, huh? You guys afraid of tomatoes? I mean, so, so many of you are told tomatoes aren't good. I'd like to talk about that a little bit on how good for you they are and how that's misinformation. The word misinformation, no one was using it when it came down to foods and chronic illness. Published it originally in here. Talked about misinformation out there in the medical field, misinformation in alternative medicine, conventional medicine, misinformation about all the trends out there. And now the word is used against medical medium. Misinformation, where's your scientific study? Well, how about millions healed around the world? Devastating illnesses and healed. How about that? Anyway, medical medium, new edition. Check it out, you guys. Um, cucumber noodles with bruschetta topping. That's what you, we're going to be making. So, link is in the description for the book. It's coming out. It's really coming out soon, actually. So, hi, everybody. Michelle L., good to see you. Kathy, good to see you. Christy, good to see you. I'm um, glad everybody's coming on. So... Hey, yeah, yeah, I can't wait for the new book to come out too. Can't wait. So I'm excited. You guys, we're YouTube Live and we're Facebook Live. I'm going to start preparing food right now. And uh, I'm going to answer questions too. So I want to be helpful the best I can. What can you do to help with Crohn's disease when it comes down, Luann, when it comes down to Crohn's? Um, you got inflammation. Okay, that's inflammation. Infl inflammation's a mystery to medical research and science. They don't know what causes it. So... Being that, you know, so anything they label like Crohn's, colitis, IBS, they, they don't know what causes it. So that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to fix anything. So then everybody's playing guessing games. Everybody's out there looking for answers and they're like, well, how can I fix this? What can I do? And then, and then they'll tell you, hey, it's your genes. They'll say, Luann, it's your genes. You just, it's your bad genes. That's why you have Crohn's. And then they'll come up with a name like Crohn's. And meanwhile, they still don't know what the inflammation is. And then what happens is, you get the inflammation um, and you get narrowing of the intestinal tract. You can get, it could bellow out. You get pockets, you get narrowing and you just get this chronic inflammatory condition going on there. And, and so what I've always done teaching doctors how to heal Crohn's so they can help their patients. What I've always done is, is the first things first is what foods can be trouble? Like what food can be causing a problem with Crohn's, you know? And that's the first thing. But the other thing is knowing the true cause of Crohn's. So that's the, that's the other thing too. So it's knowing the true cause. But in order to know the true cause, you know, that's one thing there. You got to know also like what to avoid that's actually behind the true cause. So it's kind of like a combination, right? And so when it comes down to Crohn's, it's what can we avoid? The true cause, pathogens, toxic heavy metals do play a role. Okay, they do play a role, toxic heavy metals. I'm peeling a cucumber right now because I'm going to make some cucumber noodles. Got this little tool right here. And you get a whole bunch of pathogens. They get inside the intestinal tract and they start to weaken the lining. They start to inflame the lining. You can get streptococcus in there, E. coli, and they cause a lot of issues. Um, they attach themselves to the lining of the colon and you start getting little pockets and little divots and that happens to a lot of people. Then the other thing is viruses too. You know, a lot of viruses create problems in the intestinal tract lining. Um, so the combination of both of these is really is really contributing. And then and then you know um, foods that aren't good that keep on feeding these pathogens. You know, like for instance, I got something right here. Like this is not a good food right here. Um, we're dealing with Crohn's or colitis, or IBS, or digestive issues, or intestinal tract disorders. This is not a great food right here. These, these beautiful eggs right here, aren't they pretty, right? And terrible food for any kind of condition, but I'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, the thing is, is the intestinal tract gets so sensitive. I hear those eggs rolling around on the plate right now. Intestinal tract gets so sensitive too, because the nerve endings start to get sensitive because you get in, in that inflammation. So all the nerve endings in the intestinal tract are really get, they really get sensitive. So when you're eating foods, you don't know what's helping or what's not. And that's something that gets, becomes very difficult. Um, what I like to do with, with Crohn's is 
Um, steamed potatoes are really gentle, really easy on the system, but they're also anti-pathogen. So um, that's one food right there that I like to I like to teach doctors to use for their patients. Papaya banana, that's a big one right there. So papaya banana, do I have any bananas back here? I don't have either or. I thought I had, thought I had some bananas back there. Um, and and also there's protocols in the medical meeting books you can take to your doctor and all that, you know, and have them have them look at it right there. You guys are making cucumber noodles. But papayas, bananas are really good for Crohn's. That one's very helpful, it's soothing. It helps to push past some of those narrowings so that um, people with Crohn's can can go to bathroom easy because that's a problem. You get lots of different constipation, a lot of pain and all of that stuff. Um, but what to avoid is a critical thing. Milk, cheese, butter, eggs, the very eggs I was just showing you. Definitely avoid those eggs and gluten because all those will feed bugs. So what happens is if you got the strep bacteria and you're eating the eggs, because now I got a real egg here in front of me. And you know, the strep bacteria is sitting inside the intestinal tract and it's it's camped there. There's colonies of it. And then that, that goes for people with a lot of digestive tract disorders that aren't even diagnosed properly or not, where it's mystery. It's like, okay, what's going on? You got cramping, bloating, all of that. And what happens is that bacteria just loves to feed on eggs. So we're eating eggs thinking that's a great food and then all of a sudden, you know, that's, that's, that's the food it's eating. And then it proliferates. Two weeks later, conditions are worse, but yet the egg felt so good. It felt so good. It went down. It was easy on the system. It didn't rub on any of the lining. It didn't trigger off any of the nerve endings. The egg was just, it was just so easy. It turned just into a glue that goes into down the patch, like a glue that just sits in the center of the intestinal tract and works its way down, right? And it doesn't trigger any kind of like pain or any kind of discomfort. So we think the eggs are probably a, a safe bet. But what the egg does is it keeps on feeding all the bugs and the bugs create more inflammation and then we get more problems and then we're sensitive to lettuce. Meaning in the sense that, cause you feel the lettuce going down and then we're sensitive to other things and there's a lot of confusion. But that's what happens there. Um, Okay, so I'm just get, I'm just preparing some cucumbers here. I'm going to turn them into noodles in a little bit. Then I'm going to make the sauce with the bruschetta on top of it. Um, bruschetta, you can call it bruschetta. I've, some people call it bruschetta. Some people call it bruschetta. Some people call it something different. Um, I'm going to cut these ends off right here. This cucumber. Insulin resistance, Lori. Insulin resistance. Okay. Fat equals insulin resistance right there okay fats and i mean milk cheese butter eggs chicken beef i'm not going in i'm not, not going against animal protein nut butters okay nut butters nut milks all right avocado oils coconut oil even healthy fats right all fats lead to insulin resistance so it's about how much fat's in your diet? Like how much fat is in your diet? You know, like are you guys, like how much fat's in your diet? Are you guys doing like a lot of fat in your diet? Because that, le this is insulin resistance right here. I'm showing you insulin resistance. That's what this is, okay? So here's how it works, okay? Even somebody that doesn't have real, real high insulin resistance, like it's not off the chart yet. It's always there for everybody no matter what. So you got all your fats right there. You got your burger. And that's a beef burger, okay? That's not a vegan burger. That's a beef burger. And all that fat in there, okay? What that does is it blocks sugar from entering your cells. So you have to basically produce a lot of insulin, but the fat stops the insulin from taking sugar into cells. And then you got the cheese, more fat right there. And cheese has got sugar in it too, which makes it even worse because you got fat and sugar combined, right? You got more sugar, which is the bun, okay? And then you got fried potatoes, fried French fries, right? See those fried French fries? Those are fried in oil. So when they're fried in oil, what do you have? You have insulin resistance because you got sugar and fat, sugar and fat. You see the burger? The burger is sugar and fat. That's what the burger is. What's the best thing on this plate? Well, the potato is one of the best things, but the potato has been crucified. <laughs> It's been annihilated. I don't know. It's been just, it's been injured because 
and or sacrificed, whatever it is, because it's been fried in oil. So the potato's been hindered, right? And but what's the best thing here? Well, these pickles, well, that's that's vinegar. So these pickles aren't that great. You see that? Because these pickles are vinegar, right? Tomato's the best thing. The onion's the best thing and the lettuce is the best thing in this whole setup, right? If the potatoes weren't fried in oil, that would be one of the best things too. So anyway, watch out, I don't spill this off the, this thing doesn't pop off the plate. I don't want that popping off the plate. <laughs> and then, um, the plate was greasy. There's so much fat in that food, so much, that that's from a restaurant around the corner. There's so much fat in that food that, that like the grease on the plate, it just found its way on the plate. It's all over my hands and I really don't want grease on my <laughs> bruschetta and cucumber noodles. All right, let's get going. Let's talk about insulin resistance, okay? How about if we do that? What happens is fat fills up in your bloodstream when you have that cheeseburger or the peanut butter smoothie, because you're putting peanut butter in your smoothie, or peanut butter on your oatmeal. Oatmeal has enough fat in it by itself, naturally, right? But that's okay. That's all right, that's all right. But when you add fat to your oatmeal, like all that peanut butter, you get yourself in trouble. Because the sugar in that oatmeal, the sugar, the carbohydrate in that oatmeal can't find its way into your cells. So your pancreas has to, whoo, has to pedal to the metal, man. That pancreas has to pedal to the metal. If your pancreas could talk, it would say, it would say, oh no. <laughs> Why did that person just put all that fat with that sugar, that carbohydrate? Because now I'm gonna have to produce way more insulin and burn my pancreas out. So by the time they're 40 years old, they got type two diabetes. By the time they're 45, they got type two diabetes. Even type 1 diabetes, whatever. I mean, and so your pancreas just has to spill out all of that insulin to try to get that carbohydrate into cells because guess what? We run on sugar. Newsflash, not to you guys. You guys know this stuff by now because you've been watching, uh, you know, the medical medium, books and, and podcasts and everything else, right? But newsflash to anybody else, all right? Your body has to run on sugar. You can't function, you can't do nothing. I can't do this without sugar. That's it. Sugar takes care of it. And if you don't have sugar, which is hence your blood sugar, which is glucose, which runs at your brain, it runs your thoughts. People say, you know what? He talks so fast. You know, I, I got friends that say, you know what? Why don't you talk slower on all your videos and all your podcasts? And I'm like, I have to force myself to talk slow. I have to force myself. And, and they're like, well, he must be jacked up on tons of caffeine. No, I'm not. That's sugar. That's glucose. That's natural carbohydrate in a potato. That's sugar from a lemon. That's sugar from a tomato. Mm, that's where it comes from. But guess what? That sugar's not blocked by fat. So yeah, I could have a little avocado. I love avocado. Yeah, I could have a little bit of tahini. I love tahini. Sure. You can have that. I love hemp seeds. Hemp seeds, an amazing food. But, you know, I'm cautious. I'm not going to sit there and, and, and do it all day long. I'm not going to be doing hemp seeds on and off and then throw some nut butters in there and then have chicken at night and then, and then to do a guacamole. And then what happens is you just do too much fat, too much fat, too much fat, too much fat. And it stops the sugar from going into your cells because insulin has to be produced and then the fat blocks it and now you got insulin resistance. Mm. Tomato's really good. That's gonna make a great bruschetta. So let's do one more cucumber here. Type two diabetes is such an easy fix, it's ridiculous. Easiest fix there is. So easy. Um, Science and research never knew, still doesn't know how to get rid of type 2 diabetes. So you got all that money, millions and millions of dollars going into the medical industry, billions of dollars, big pharma and all, all their paid for studies, and they still can't fix type 2 diabetes. It's such an easy fix. It's such an easy fix. Get your liver better, lower your fats, get your liver stronger, okay? You learn how to eat right. 
Okay, then you can heal that insulin resistance. Your pancreas builds up and boom, you're out of it. You don't even need insulin anymore. Um, so, <clears throat> wait, let me just get this one going here because I want to still talk about that. So, what happens is when someone stops sugar, okay, so check this out, you guys, all right? When someone stops sugar, okay, and they start to improve, they're only improving because they're taking the critical piece away that you need to get into your cells. But they only improve because they took one of the very things out. See, it's, it's fat and sugar combined that causes insulin resistance, but it's fat that's the troublemaker and that's the big causer, right? But when you remove sugar, then you have all this fat floating around in your bloodstream and less insulin is produced because there's not enough sugar floating around in your bloodstream. So less insulin is produced. So there's just it's just like, okay, but that's not the fix. That's not how to fix it. That's not how it works. Because guess what? Your diabetes is still there and it's not going away. It's never going away because then all of a sudden you're going to eat some sugar. Wow. I've been on this diet for a long time. I'm keeping all my carbohydrates away. My doctor says my A1C is getting better. It's dropping. But yet I'm just dying for a carbohydrate. I'm dying for a little bit of sugar. Let me eat this candy. Oh my God, my A1C. Oh my God, my sugar's off the chart. Oh my God, something's wrong. And, and what happens is my type 2, 2 diabetes is back in full force. I had an orange. I had a piece of bread. But what the reality is, the truth is, if you take out the fats, you can eat a piece of bread, you can eat an orange, you can eat a piece of candy, and guess what? You're not gonna have any insulin resistance. You're not gonna have any type 2 diabetes. It's not even gonna be there. That's how it works. Anyway. Lucas, thanks for the tip with the high uh, quality spirulina. It made almost all the difference to me. Lucas, supplements being the highest quality or the best for a whole bunch of different reasons is critical for healing. I've been saying this for years. Years ago, years ago, there was crap out for supplements. Crap, right? So it was really hard to get people better. Even if Spirit of Compassion said, this person needs nettle leaf, to get a nettle leaf product to do its job, to take somebody to the finish line was hard, right? Same thing. The spirit of compassion said, this person needs spirulina to get the toxic heavy metals out, right? Like you're talking about, Lucas, the spirulina. Then it's got to be the right kind. And that's always been the problem out there. You know, always. And this is the kind I use. You guys know that. The Vimergy. Uh, v is in Victor. I, M is in Mary, E-R-G-Y dot com. It's Vimergy. But... And I'm not sponsored, but it's it means everything. The higher quality means everything to getting better. And I that's been the fight all these years. It's been like, okay, I can work with foods with people, right? But if they have these these Epstein bars, these shingles, these the streptococcus, they have these toxic heavy metals, I need more than just just the foods, you know? Spirit of Compassion told me for years, you need more than that. It's like you have to have the best quality of of supplementation and so the Vimergy is the best quality and they have a whole line of stuff that's incredible I got I mean I got it here because it's what I take it's a magnesium I take it's a vitamin C I take the micro C but anyway it does make a difference Lucas and I'm glad you found that out Rita says I just got out of my third diabetes med that I can't afford want to learn how to eat what book can I read <clears throat> The diabetes section in this book right here. Um, this is coming out. You can look. You can get it right now at Amazon.com. Um, you can go to the library too. The link is in the the description. Go to the library after the book comes out, and maybe the library will stock it in time so you can actually um, get get a copy for free if you need to. Because a lot of people are hurting for money right now, so I always want people to be able to get free books. Um, so that and then cleanse the heal. I talk about diabetes in, t in here too. So Cleanse the Heal, it's on sale at Amazon.com, $16.99, it's on there. And uh, so, and that's packed with information, which is incredible. And I talk about 
I talk about how it works with diabetes, how to heal all of that, type 2 diabetes. I mean, more people have healed with medical medium information with diabetes than any, anywhere on the planet. Um, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's just, it's so incredible. So anyway, I want to talk about, I'm going to get these noodles going. So I'm going to start shaving these noodles down, you guys. I'm going to move the basil over. So let me do that. And um, so what I do, I have this little julienner. So I'm, I'm making some noodles right here. So radical fats are, are fats that are, see, all foods have fats in them. All foods, all right? And keep that in mind. This cucumber right here, this English cucumber I'm, I'm actually julienning, right? It, it has fat in it. Every single thing has fat in it. Those tomatoes have fat in it. That basil has fat in it. That onion has fat in it. Garlic has fat in it. So, so keep that in mind. That's important to know, right? And then there's, there's foods that have more fat. They're made of fat mostly. And I call those radical fats. And there's a lot of healthy ones. Uh, tahini, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, right? Hemp seeds. These are healthy fats. Coconut, right? Coconut oil. These are healthy fats. Olive oil. Yeah. Healthy fat, right? So it's not like I don't know that. People, people pretend I don't know that or something. It's actually really funny. He doesn't know. He doesn't know about fats. He's against fats. He doesn't know about what everybody's talking about in the trendy health world about healthy fats. He's not aware of that. Oh, really? Because I got everybody eating avocado because guess what? It was considered to be poisonous 35 years ago. The health scene was against avocado. You were, you were laughed off a lecture stage if you said an avocado was healthy fat. Did you know that? You were laughed off of a health lecture stage. And, um, and so I got avocado really, really out there. I mean, I spent years teaching doctors, teaching people, teaching everybody about that. And so... Um, and it's a, it's a better fat because all those years ago, I was trying to get people off of the bad fats. I was trying to get people off of this. So I spent a lifetime trying to get people off of that right there. Okay. To, to onto avocado years ago. But here's the thing. When you're chronically ill, when that plate's greasy, <laughs> that plate's really greasy. When you're chronically ill. Okay. You need, you need a step above that. You need a step further than just the avocado, the healthy nuts and seeds, the almonds, the almond butter, right? The peanuts, the peanut butter, the hemp seeds, the coconut oil. You need a step further than that. If you're really sick, you're really struggling, you're really viral, lupus, multiple sclerosis, um, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome, ME chronic fatigue syndrome, different trigeminal neuralgia, whatever it is, right? There's, there's, there's hundreds of conditions. It, you need more more than just, it's not just good enough to be like, I'm going to go keto and still have some avocado. I'm going to be plant-based keto and still have my nuts and seeds every day and my cacao. It's not enough if you want to go to the finish line. And I've always taught that for 35 plus years. It's, it, it takes more than that. It takes, it takes much more than that, you know? And, and that's really important to know. It really is. So... Erica, what about type one? <clears throat> um, when it comes down to type one, type one is is a is a pancreas injury. Science research doesn't know that, but food poisoning um, creates a lot of situations where people go they become type one. They have that condition because of food poisoning. Yeah, you could have food poisoning and be type one a week later. You could have food poisoning and be type one a year later, two years later from food poisoning, right? Right. And also pathogens. You know, viruses get into the pancreas and they create type one. Uh, um, and and um, even with delayed type one, where it's like a slow progression of type one. Um, late in type one. So even with that, so, um, and, and look, there's, there's a, there's, you always have to keep it in your heart and soul that there's always hope to heal. It's just about doing, doing enough of the right things to get there. And that's what it is. Um, I would take, I would take, uh, I would take the medical meeting books to, to, to your doctor or healer or 
whoever's in charge of your health care and, and read the diabetes section, take a look. I offer a lot of things for type one and type two and you can see what's right for you with your doctor. So you've got, you've got that forward movement. The most important thing with type one, the most important thing is to make sure it's not getting worse, okay? Even improving, you can improve type one. You can take type one a lot, get it a lot better and a lot better and a lot better. And not only that, it's also about making sure type one doesn't get worse, 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 worse. So it's doing the right things to keep type one stable so your pancreas doesn't get a further injury, so it doesn't, um, doesn't become more problematic, more inflamed. And that's the key. It's about, hey, I want my type one to be here for the rest of my life and not all of a sudden worse. And that's the key. Or I want my type one not only here, but I want my type one a lot better than what it is. And that's the key too. Um, and ask your doctor if you can do 32 ounces of celery juice. Ask your doctor if you can do that. Ask your doctor if you, he, if you can do any of the protocols, medical medium protocols. But anyway. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> I'm getting these cucumber noodles over here. Getting them in the bowl. So right now this is what we're doing. So there's my cucumber noodles. Still some more work to do. Still making some more noodles here, you guys. Mariana, there are people on natural health group in natural health groups spreading rumors about you, Anthony. A friend told me this. Always. Oh my God, of course. There always is. A lot of hate groups, I think, right? Um, you know, there's there's always that happening. I think I'm an easy target because of discrimination and there's a ton of lies and I mean that's just how it's always been. What happens is you know you get discriminated against when you hear a voice, spirit of compassion since age four and you get discriminated against when you get too many people better because a lot of people get jealous in the health field and the health industry. They get jealous. They're like why does he have millions and millions of people following his information. You know, and they just can't wrap their heads around it. A lot of people, they're either jealous or they're just psycho about it or something. I mean, it's really weird. I think what happens is like, why is he the number one health author in the world for seven years running? Why? I mean, and just so you know, um, the Medical Medium book series, okay, is the number one health series in the world, right? So, Keep that in mind because it works, not because of promotion or money or marketing because I didn't use any PR or marketing. So there's a lot of lies. I'll give you a whole rundown of just a few of them right now. A, a no, number one lie, he must have serious money behind his, his marketing and PR firms and how else did he get to where he is? 100% eh, inaccurate, all right? No PR firms, no publicists, uh, no money into PR and all of that, okay? So that's number one. That's a lie that's been out there. A simple lie is everybody thought I was 27 years old for the longest time. So every time I said I've been in this for 30 years, everybody would go bananas and berserk and they'd be like, that's impossible, okay? Obviously, you know, I'm much, much older than that. And that's just one all on its own, okay? Other lies too, there's lots of them. I mean, it just, the list goes on and on and on. But but I think what happens is for, because I've talked to a couple of my friends about this, doctors and stuff, and they're like, look, 500 million people in the world know who you are. And medical medium information has spread beyond and around the world because it's the number one health selling series and health books there are on the planet. And that's going to lead to a lot of discrimination, especially where your source is coming from above since age four. So there's going to be lots of all of that. It's just, just tons of that stuff. Um... I mean, but you got you to be careful, you know, with that and just, you know, there's so many lies. It's just, it's over, it's, it's over the chart. I mean, it's, it's off the chart. There's so many, so many lies. So I got my noodles going here. I'm going to peel one more cucumber. Just mixing these, you know, this like, this like spaghetti. I love this. I got one more to go. Let's do one more. I cut these ends off a little bit here. Let me see. You 
So yeah, so I'm making the bruschetta and the cucumber noodles right here. So I'm just peeling this cucumber. I'm trying to pay attention to this so I don't cut my hand. Um, Marcella says he is 40, question mark. Much older. <laughs> I wish I was 40. That would be so amazing. Wow. That would be incredible. That would be incredible. It's way older than that. Um, but anyway, so, you know, the whole thing is, so what you'll find in a lot of groups, there's a lot of hate groups and stuff. A lot of rumors were made up and spread. And then, of course, people try to cancel me constantly. So I'm always trying to be, can't like, always just trying to, like, a cancel movement, cancel culture and cancel movement against me. That comes up all the time. Um, you know what happens? I just laugh at all of it. I, like, laugh at all the, the stories and the fake stories and the lies and stuff like that. Did you know two women um, came to me back last spring, about a year ago, and told me that an organization was paying was paying people to spread rumors and lies. And so both these women were inter what they were they were approached and offered money. But what they did instead of taking the money like so many do in the hate groups and stuff, instead of taking the money, these two women contacted medical medium and let us know, okay? Let us know about this thing that was happening where they were offering money to write stories claim things to try to take down the mm so that everybody stops healing around the world i'll tell you right now and it was the people you least expected that were actually spreading the lies and stories people that you would never think that seemed so sincere and so oh yeah you know medical medium and i'm just living my life and you know, with my cute little family and whatever it is, and just spreading the word, you know, spreading bad rumors and lies or people you would never even believe. So it's it's crazy how it works. And they approached a lot of people. They approached, it's, it's really, it was so sinister and they could still be doing it. You're not surprised, Michelle? Good, good to see you, Loon. Loon, you care? You care? All right. I'm going to start chopping up some tomatoes right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up. Katrina says, I saw you at UPW. Thank you for staying strong and not stopping. Amazing. So glad you're here. Incredible. I'm honored you're here. I really am. I'm going to chop up some tomatoes here, you guys. Let me take a look here. Get a bowl going. But what happens to medical medium information when you apply it right and you want to lose weight, you can lose weight, you get your liver healthy, you lose all this unwanted weight. And if you're underweight, medical medium information can bring healthy weight back on when it's done correctly and people are using it correctly. I'm chopping up some tomatoes right now. I'm going to read some more comments and help out the best I can. So, um, because I'm going to get a couple more things. You guys, um, if you just got on here, I'm making the bruschetta, just some tomatoes, got some noodles right here. <clears throat> I 
Got it. You know what happens with these little tomatoes? If you're chopping up, you can put them in a food processor and give it a pulse. You can do that. Um, Dr. Fon. Good to see you on here. Great MD. Trisha Marie, good to see you. And you can, you know, one of the things is you could put, I wouldn't put these in a blender. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put um, these cherry tomatoes in a blender. Because if you put them in a blender, they're just going to turn into a soup. And you don't want this soup. You want this kind of choppy and cut in pieces. Okay. That's how you want it. That's the best way of doing it. And if you, do I have a garden? Yeah, I love to grow stuff. It's not a big garden or anything, but I love to grow stuff whenever I can. Grow tomatoes, grow cucumbers, love to do it. Um, but yeah, you want to... So I'm going to answer more questions for you guys. Ashley Kiven, good to see you. Love your videos. These tomatoes are a little extra ripe, which makes them, um, which makes them even really nice. They're not overripe. Because, you know, overripe tomatoes are the worst. You don't want overripe tomatoes. You don't want overripe anything where it's like it's going bad. But um, these tomatoes here are actually. Ann says, what juicer do I use for celery juice? I use the MM900 HDS. So it's by Omega. Omegajuicers.com. O-M-E-G-A. That's the one I use. It's an incredible juicer. It's my favorite one. Um, and, uh, the company's great. I love the juicer. It really squeeze. It's say it just saves you so much money. And that's the whole point. Um, you can cut these in four, but these are so extra ripe. I'm cutting them in twos because they're so, they're so ripe, which is going to make them really good. It's going to make the sauce really good. Cause what happens is with tomatoes, you might get some cherry tomatoes that aren't really fully ripe and you buy them and they're really hard. Then you cut them in fours and that's what you do. I'm cutting these in twos right now. So if you guys, you guys want to know, cause these are really nice and soft, but they're juicy as heck, which is going to be really good. Why do tomato skins not digest? I see that question. Don't digest. No, they, they, they digest. They do. They do. Your body will, it's, tomato skins are fibrous. Fiber doesn't digest, but any nutrients around and in the fiber digests. You just don't know that. So when it comes out the other end and you're like, wait a minute, why didn't that tomato skin digest? How come I see that tomato skin in the bathroom, right? How come I see that tomato skin in the toilet? It's like, well, first of all, everything that needed to be extracted from that tomato skin has been extracted. The rest of that tomato skin, which you can't tell, is actually the, 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 the useless part. Well, it's just fiber. Like I said, you always get plenty of fiber in all your foods. Much Lane Love says, love you, MM. Can you talk about OCD? Yeah, definitely. Run that by you a little bit. So... With OCD, okay, it's all about metals, but it's all about metal deposits being rather larger. That's the other thing on top of neurons. So it's metal deposits being rather larger on top of neurons, and they'll sit inside neurons. And that's and I'll show you what happens is that um, see these little metal deposits right here. I have on the side of the brain, so these shiny little aluminum pieces here, right? The deposits aren't that big. Big. This is just a demonstration model, right? And so what happens is as aluminum collects and mercury collects on top of neurons, it's kind of magnetic. The more aluminum you get in your body, the more 
aluminum goes to the brain to the very spots that have the aluminum to begin with. Same thing with mercury. The more mercury you have in deposits on the neurons, the more mercury, like if you're eating tuna fish, if you're doing um, maybe some pharmaceuticals that have mercury in it, whatever it is, you get more mercury added to the neurons to those little deposits, right? And then it depends on where the deposits are sitting that creates the OCD. So deposits are sitting in the emotional center of the brain in those neurons, that can be really intense. That OCD could be much more intense versus sitting, say, somewhere in the left hemisphere, right hemisphere, somewhere else off the cuff, somewhere, uh, uh, you know, somewhere in the distance, depending on where in the tissue, in the glial cells and so forth. But what happens is you have an electrical impulse and that electricity is running. So it's running through the brain, right? So you got that, all that electricity is running through that brain when you think your thoughts, okay? So what happens is that's electricity, and guess what? That's metal. Electricity, metal. What happens when electricity meets metal? Okay, think about that, okay? When electricity hits metal, you don't want to, during a lightning storm, you don't want to go out there with like a golf club or something and, and stick it up in the air, or you don't want to go out there with even an umbrella. You don't want to go out there with anything. You don't want, you don't want to be out there with an antenna when there's a lightning storm. You don't want electricity being drawn to metal. So what OCD is, it's electrical impulses traveling through neurons and it hits a pocket of metal. And when it hits, Pressing Print said, your kitchen is so inviting, I'm honored. Hey, glad to have you here. Um, so when that, when that electricity hits the metal, it then goes back up the neuron the other direction while another uh, but while another electrical impulse is coming down that same neuron they hit each other so what happens is your electrical impulse is hitting the deposits of metal it's hitting the aluminum it's hitting the mercury it's hitting the copper mostly aluminum and mercury it comes down to ocd and then it hits it and then bounces back another another electrical impulse is coming down the same channel and it's hitting it too. It's hitting the electrical impulse trying to go back up. It's exploding. You just got this repeat, we constant repeat. It's these electrical impulses hitting the metal and bouncing back up, hitting the metal. And that's when the obsessive thoughts come in. It's like, oh my God, I can't break these thoughts. I can't fall asleep. My mind is racing. It won't stop. All those obsessive thoughts just, and then those obsessive thoughts can actually lead to taking action. You know what I mean? Like it makes you jump out of bed. You get up upset. You get frustrated. Now you're pacing. Now you're on a phone with a friend. Now you're on the phone with a family member and you're, you're telling them your obsessive thoughts and you can't break it. And it gets really difficult and it's hard to break that whole frequency. Um, and it's like, it's like, I mean, I, I've seen so many different cases of OCD and really bad ones, terrible ones for so many years. And one of the worst ones I've seen, I've seen a lot of bad ones over the last 35 years helping people is the, this woman who, it, she needed to check her body to make sure her head was on her body. It was an obsessive thought. She was perfectly sane. She's a great person. And, um, but and she's, she had, she's been, she was at the time, she went to like 20 psychiatrists, a hundred doctors. And it was in, and she was really tortured by it. And, what happened was she would have to run into him. She'd have to keep a mirror with her 24 seven. She'd have to go somewhere with a mirror. She'd have to go in her car with the mirror. She, she'd have to see the mirror because she'd have to make sure her head was attached to her body. And it became an obsessive thought. She knew her head was attached to her body. She knew, of course she did. She totally knew, perfectly sane, totally knew. And, but that's not how it works with OCD. You can know your door is locked. You can know you check the stove. I know those are the, the basic versions of it, but you, you can know you're, you check the stove and drive away and still have to come back and check it one more time. And I've seen people couldn't even leave their house. They have to walk back into the house a hundred times to check their stove because they're scared to death it's on, right? But that's just those versions. This is another type. It's like she had to have a mirror with her all the time, a compact. She had to, everywhere she went, she had to have a mirror. And... And then there's people who go through, they go through uh, OCD where they just think something bad is going to happen to a loved one. Something bad is going to happen to a friend. Something bad is going to happen to somebody else. Something bad is going to happen to them and they can't shake it and they can't shake it. It becomes obsessive. It devours them, right? 
There's so many versions of OCD that I've had to help people with and everything. And it's, it's all about what kind of metal, how much metal, where it is in the brain, how the electrical impulses are hitting it. Are they traveling around it? Are they hitting it direct? Are they bouncing off other electri electrical uh, impulses? And that's what OCD is. So it's all about getting the metals out. And that's, that's why I've always said, you know, it's about the barley grass juice powder, the spirulina, you know, the Vimergy spirulina, Vimergy barley grass juice powder. That's the one I use. It's all about that, plus the wild blueberries and dulse, the heavy metal detox smoothie. You know, about getting those metals out so that you're free from that. And that's important. All right, just gonna cut up a few more tomatoes here. This is such a great dish and it's so easy to make. I'm just taking my time. I mean, honestly, could put these in a food processor and pulse it, but I like chopping them. So I see a question by Karen. I want to gain weight as well. Potatoes don't make me gain because there's no fat on them. Are you eating enough of them? If you want, like, if you want to gain weight, um, I mean, I have athletes on potatoes. They they don't do any fats, and they're 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 stoking with muscles. All of that. Are you are you using your muscles so you can gain weight by building a little bit of muscle? Interskeletal muscles, mu muscles all around your body, you can gain five pounds of weight um, using those muscles. Are you doing resistance training? Are you taking walks? Are you swimming? Are you riding a bicycle? Are you keeping your muscles tone? Are you building a little muscle? That will put on a little weight just that alone and potatoes build muscle. So also, are you eating enough? Uh, potatoes. Are you hungry? Not hungry? Are you only eating one potato, two potato, three potato, four? Like, what are you doing? And that's one thing too. These are, I'm trying to help you be your own detective. Okay. Are you doing more bananas? Bring in some more bananas, bring in some more dates, get some more calories in. And you might be low calorie to what you're doing. You might be an active person, a really active person, but your calories are low, but your calories are low. You're not eating enough. There's not a lot of calories in a potato, right? Not, and it's not like, it's not a chocolate cake. Um, you know, unless it's those French fries I showed you earlier. If it's those French fries, you know, that's a different story. All that oil, right? But plus what happens is when you get healthy and you start to clean house and you start, you start to clean up those fats and you start to clean up the processed foods and you're doing the low fat, what happens is you're losing all toxic swelling. You're not swelling anymore. A lot of the guys... And, and women too that I see out there that even fitness and everything, you can see where they're swelling, where they're swollen. There's a lot of dudes out there that are, you know, that are stoking some muscles, but they're also, they're also got a layer, a layer of fat and swelling, a layer of water over their muscles. So it makes them even look bigger. They got a layer, they got that bulk and it's a lot of swelling. And when that swell, that's the liver not working good. You know, when you get rid of that swelling and you just have the muscle by itself, boom, you just lost 15 pounds. It's like, what happened? But meanwhile, you're all muscle. But, but, but as far as going on, I'm just giving you different examples out there in case anybody's going through any of that. I'm trying to help everybody. But keep in mind that are you doing enough calories? Are you doing enough potato? You might be an active person. And another thing too, are you doing anything to use your muscles to build some muscle, right? Um, that's, a, that's a whole thing on its own too. So are you using enough muscle to build your muscle? Um, little muscles count. You can get five pounds all on its own right there. I know when I work too hard, work too hard, work too hard, and I can't even ride my bicycle, and I can't even ride my bike, I can't even take walks because I'm doing 18 hours a day nonstop, and I have to sleep, I can't, I can't be out there doing self-care, I can't be out there riding a bicycle, I can't take a run. I know that if I'm not running for a while, and I'm not biking for a while, and I'm just working, and it goes on for months, and, and I know that I'll lose a few pounds of of, you know, lose it like a couple of pounds. They'd be like, hey, I think that couple of pounds, and then you got hop back on the bicycle and you do bike, the bike three times a week and all of a sudden all that muscle comes back and boom, you're all of a sudden five pounds heavier. You're also five pounds of muscle, seven pounds of muscle. And then you go and you, you know, you do, you do some runs and your leg muscles are building up. And I'm not saying you got to run. I'm just saying, are you active? Are you using muscles? 
Are you doing 10 bananas a day? You can do 10 bananas. 10 bananas is, is pretty easy to eat for a lot of people. You can knock down a few bananas. Um, are you doing smoothies? You can put them in smoothies. You can do banana blueberry smoothies and do like three of them a day. Do some more potatoes at night. You can do that and actually, you know, and actually clean that all up. All right, so, and actually get your weight to where you want to go. Um, and, um, and, and also, you know, it's a personal preference to where someone wants to be too. Someone might look at you and be like, hey, you look really amazing. And, you know, another person might be like, you need to put on weight. It's like, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy how things work too on that level. So I'm going to get some, I'm going to do some uh, tomato here. I mean, some, some onion. I'm going to chop up some onion. Got some red onion. It's going to go in this tomato bruschetta. So Denise says, I really need to lose weight. What is your recommendation? First thing I would do is... Um, Checking to make sure I don't have a bad onion here. The first thing I would do is, is get the liver in a better place. And that's about lowering fats. What's your diet like? How many fats are you eating? Are you eating too much oils? Are you eating um, are you eating too much um, too much avocado? Too much oil, too much chicken, too much beef, too much, you know, too much of all that kind of fat. Is is that what is is that going on? Or are you doing something different? Guys, I'm gonna grab another onion. That onion was a little tricky. I'll be right there. <laughs> So, so I would try to get the liver healthier, take the fats away for a little while. How about do the medical meeting morning cleanse? Have you done the medical meeting morning cleanse? Do some uh, lemon water first thing in the morning, flush out that liver, then move on to celery juice a half an hour later. Got a nice onion right here, you guys. And take out the radical fats. No fats at least till noon, at least until noon. No nut butters, no oils, no olives. Not that people eat a lot of olives. They don't, but they do a lot of olive oil. Um, that's what I would do there is I would, I would at least have the fats out until noon, right? I would keep it fats once a day. If you're somebody used to eating fats like chicken, beef, uh, fish, avocados, nuts, and seeds, pick the one you want and make that the only one. If it's beef, then you have beef for dinner, right? If it's chicken, have chicken for dinner. If it's nuts and seeds or nut butters, have it later on in the afternoon or dinner. Um, if it's avocado, have your guacamole at night for dinner. Start with that. Now, if that doesn't cut it, your liver's definitely stagnant and sluggish. So then I would go days without fats. I would go just complete days with no radical fats on any level. Take radical fats away. Um, I would do maybe the 369 Advanced Cleanse. 369 advanced cleanse or 369 original cleanse and I would repeat it pick the one you want to do the but you can take it as far as you want to go there's no reason why you can't lose weight everybody and anybody can lose unwanted weight with the medical medium information if they actually apply it I wouldn't do these you're not you're not going to lose weight easy with these unless you've already been eating really bad processed foods, really bad greasy fried foods or just chocolate cake or whatever you're eating and then you go keto and you get rid of all your processed foods and you're doing eggs and you're like, hey, I'm losing weight, losing weight. But when you when your liver's too stagnant and sluggish, you can't get away with just even the simple keto diet to lose weight. It's like you're doing, I know a lot of people did keto diets and they gained more weight, gained more weight than back in the gym. Then they had to go literally like, <laughs> like, like no calories and just eat a few eggs a day and it's just intermittent fast all day long just to try to lose weight but it always comes back later the minute you start eating so i'm going to chop up some onion which guys what i'm doing is i'm trying to make this right here 
little chopped onion in there. Got the tomato on the cucumber noodles. Almost broke my eggs. If you got any kind of reproductive system condition, endometriosis, fibroids, PCOS, PID, even UTIs, which is, you know, another situation. I'll just stay away from eggs. Whatever you do, stay away from eggs. My eyes are tearing right now from the onion. Let's do a little bit of basil. I lost 20 pounds doing the Advanced 369 Cleanse. Elaine, I am beyond proud of you. I'm blown away. Janice, I lost 18 pounds in six weeks on the 369 Advanced Cleanse. Incredible. My God, these onions are killing my eyes right now. I'm crying. Yichota says, that was me. I gained weight doing keto. Yep. I believe that. I really believe that. Um... God, my eyes are running from that red onion. That one got me, you guys. Whew. Gotta give me one minute. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> oh my God. Getting some basil on here, chopped up, nice and fine. I just got the garlic next. <laughs> I lost 18 pounds doing two rounds of the original 369 Lisa Incredible. <laughs> Emma said, oh my God, you have eggs? Eggs over there? All right, let's, let's finish this up as far as this recipe. So chopped garlic. I got a mincer right here. I was going to mince it. You can do chopped or mince. And I love using the mincer too. Now, two cloves of garlic might be too much for you. Um, one clove might be too much for someone. Do a half a clove. Do a quarter of a clove. Maybe you're someone that loves garlic. You can do three cloves if you really want. Eva says, Dear Anthony, thank you so much for your work. All my family is healing because of you. How can I get rid of lipomas? Sending lots of love to you for my family. Lipomas, lipomas have a little tentacle on them. <clears throat> so they have a little, um, lipomas actually have a little... Those onions are really powerful. That onion I brought in here. <laughs> God. That's a really good one. The power those onions have for actually killing pathogens. It's a powerful herb. It really is. I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in here. Lipomas have a little um, blood vessel that comes off of it. That blood vessel... That blood vessel um, is its feeding tube. So that blood vessel coming off it is feeding tube. So say this is a lipoma. Say this egg is a lipoma, right? And it's inside of you. People get lipomas in their arms. They get lipomas in their chest. They get them in their stomach. They get them everywhere. I mean, they get them in their legs. They get them on the back of their head. I mean, they just get lipomas everywhere. And then there's this little tentacle that hangs off a li lipoma and it looks like this okay so you got a lipoma in you and it's got a little tentacle coming off of it all right and the tentacle is a blood vessel okay angiogenesis right a little blood vessel and all of a sudden you eat a food it really likes like an egg now that's a lipoma i'm pretending it's a lipoma okay not an egg all of a sudden you eat an egg and that egg material finds its way through the bloodstream, all the hormones in the egg, whether it's organic or not, or free range, they find their way in the bloodstream and the proteins in eggs find their way and they go up, they get drawn up into that tentacle and they go right into the lipoma and the lipoma goes, whoa, we just 
cash. We just cashed in some good food. We just got some good food. And that's what they do. So then over time, over time, the lipoma grows, becomes bigger, and then you can get multiple, but all of a sudden, boom, you got two lipomas next to each other, and one is growing another tentacle off the other one. The other lipomas actually attach the other one with a blood vessel. Now you got two, and they're all nice and happy, and they're waiting for gluten, they're waiting for eggs, milk, cheese, butter, they're waiting for toxic heavy metals, they're waiting for anything. Some eggs over there. Okay, let's go with some lemon. <laughs> um, ask your doctor if you're okay with higher melatonin, higher uh, higher dosage of melatonin. Um, let me grab one. I think I don't have it right here, actually. All right, well, I usually have the Vimergy melatonin in my cabinet, but I don't right now. I must have finished it up because it's, it's such a great, great, Sup, incredible quality. But anyway, melatonin, ask your doctor if he's okay or she's okay if you start doing melatonin or melatonin at a high dosage. Like, ask your doctor if 20 milligrams of melatonin is right for you. Because, or 10 milligrams or five milligrams or more. And what melatonin does is it inhibits lipomas from growing. So, it's phytochemical compounds in melatonin that end up going into the lipoma, right? They go into the lipoma and then the lipoma can't grow. It, it doesn't have the ability to grow, so it stays the size. Because that's the key. I've always told people with lipomas, you want them to stay the size they are or shrink. And you can, you can get lipomas down if you really keep that diet clean and you're doing the right sups and you get metals out of your lipoma. Because what happens is when your lipoma... When your lipoma starts to absorb things like spirulina, barley grass juice powder, the, the, the wild blueberries, when it starts to absorb the heavy metal detox smoothie and it goes into the lipoma, then that heavy metal detox smoothie starts to grab onto metals in that lipoma and draws them out. And so your lipoma doesn't have metals in it anymore because metals help lipomas to grow too. What is a 369 cleanse? Medical medium cleanse to heal. Amazon.com, $16.99, it's on sale. You can check it out. There's the 369 cleanse in here, 369 advanced original. It's a medical medium healing tool. That's it, 369 cleanse is. So I'm gonna do a little bit of lemon and teaspoon of raw honey. Do a little bit of raw honey here. And I'm gonna mix this. A little bit of raw honey. Like that. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna squeeze some lemon in this. Squeeze a little lemon. Fat doesn't make you fat. It does, Brianna, it does. When your liver says, I had enough, fat will make you fat. That's what happens. That's why people who go keto gain weight later because their liver had enough. I'm not saying keto is the worst thing to do. It's actually a good, it's a good starting point for a lot of people because it gets you off processed food. I'm not ripping into it like it's bad or something. You can be plant-based in keto, okay? You can be plant-based in keto. You can be animal protein in keto and it gets you at least off of processed foods and gluten and all that. And you could start even losing some weight for a lot of people. But, it, but there's a lot of people that can't. So what happens is that fat made me fat and kept me fat, Allison says. Yeah, fat makes you fat. Radical fats make you fat. It just depends. Are you young? If you're really young and your liver isn't toasted yet, then, you know, if you're really young and your liver isn't burnt out yet, you're not going to get fat eating fat yet, but you're going to get fat eating fat eventually, no matter what. It gets everybody. Okay. So if you're 21 years old, or you're 22 years old, and fat hasn't made you fat yet, it's going to make you fat when you're 45 years old. And doesn't your la doesn't your doesn't your life matter? Doesn't your life count? It's going to make you fat when you're 52 years old. It's going to make you fat when you're 60 years old. It's going to make you fat someday, and it's going to somewhere along the line you're going to get fat from fat. The question is, 
that everybody always says, which I just saw the question here, doesn't your fat, doesn't your brain need fat? Um, that's interesting because your brain's not made out of fat. <laughs> your brain's made out of glycogen. And the more fat you eat and the less carbohydrate you eat and the less fruits and the less, and the less um, potatoes and, and sweet potatoes and winter squash and the less of those things you eat, um, your, your brain starts to starve starve of glycogen, and then your brain shrinks. Everybody's brain shrinks. Everybody. I was talking to a neurosurgeon last month about this. He says, he says he's seen it his whole life as a neurosurgeon. Everybody's brain, everybody's brain shrinks. He was asking me why. He was asking me, why does everybody's brain shrink? I said because it's a glucose glycogen de um, deprivation for too many years and you get older and your brain starts to atrophy. It's called brain atrophy. And just so you know, your brain is not made out of fat. It's made out of sugar. It's made out of storage glycogen, which is sugar, okay? That's what your brain's made out of. Is there fat in your brain? Yeah, but there's traces of fat throughout your entire body. It, everywhere in your body, there's, there's a trace of fat in every part of your body, omega-3 and squalene and all that. It's, just, it's everywhere in the body, right? But um, then there's traces of fat in every single food and these cucumber noodles right here and that basil sitting in front of me and these tomatoes, right? And I'm not against healthy fats if you want healthy fats, but the point is, is your brain doesn't need fat. It needs sugar. You run on sugar. Your brain thinks with sugar. Glucose is how this runs. It's glucose. Take your sugar. Okay. This is funny, okay? When you go to the doctor for a checkup, are they checking your blood fat? No, they're not. If fat was so important, I'm scratching my head here. If fat was so important, wouldn't they be checking your blood fat? They don't care about that. They just care about your blood sugar. Because guess what happens without blood sugar? Guess what happens without glucose to your cells? You die. Yeah. We, we as a human race, human species, Sugar's so critical, your brain won't run. It won't even, it won't run. It won't even work without sugar. Does your brain need fat? No, it needs sugar or you're dead. <laughs> if your brain doesn't get sugar, your brain can't exist anymore. If your brain doesn't get fat, it exists. You can live without radical fat, overt fat, whatever you want to call it. You can live without fats your whole life because there's fats in everything you eat anyway, and your brain doesn't rely on fat. You can't live without sugar in some form, shape, or some way. Even if you eat red meat, there's sugar in the blood of the meat, and it's caramelized when you cook it. It's in there. Blood sugar. Animal's blood sugar. Animal's blood inside the meat is blood sugar. And no matter what, your brain has to have sugar or you don't exist anymore, and that's why blood sugar is so critical. That's why they've been testing it, checking for it. It's all of this. So, and everyone's on caffeine, which is fake energy, to keep them energetic while they're on their high-fat diets. It's like, stay on your high-fat diet, avoid all sugars, avoid all fruit, avoid all potatoes, stay on your high-fat diet, and then use caffeine for fake energy. I mean, that's what people do when really their brain starts to atrophy. Caffeine causes atrophy in everybody's brain. It's like, Got all these people, all these elders, all these people that are getting older, their brain's atrophying, they're drinking caffeine their whole life, they're not getting enough sugar to their brain, they're getting insulin resistance so they can't even get sugar to the brain and they're just wasting away and you just age fast and everything else. You know? I mean... And a lot of people crave sugar because they're really craving like glucose that's what it is their brains craving glucose and a lot of people crave salt because they're craving trace minerals which is trace mineral salts smells so good right here you got the garlic in here you got the basil you don't need a lot of basil i mean basil's anti-pathogen which is incredible but it's so good and i'm going to put this on top of the noodles 
But you know what, you guys, you're going to get a lot of misinformation out there and it's painstaking because, yeah, you might be somebody that it really doesn't affect right now, but you can take that misinformation and be like, your brain needs fat. Let me just go with that because every single podcast doctor saying your brain needs fat because everybody's saying your brain needs fat. They don't, they don't, they're wrong. I mean, it's not how it works. Your brain actually runs on sugar. It's made out of glycogen and it needs sugar. You can't make a thought together, put a thought together. Glucose is part of how your electrical activity even works, how electrical activity in the brain, all of that, neurotransmitters even work. It's all, it's all glucose based. That onion was so strong. That onion was strong. Um, grabbing a fork here. So I'm just going to mix this up a little bit. So I got the cucumber noodles. I got the tomato bruschetta on top here. Okay. That's what I have. Now, yeah, I mean, look, if, you, if you're into fat and that's all you want to eat or something like that, I still want you to make these healthy meals. If you needed to put a little avocado on it because you're not going to have it any other way, at least I know you got something really healthy in, in you with that. But I would try to keep a fat-free meal once in a while in your life, maybe in a day or something. When you're sick, you'll feel how fat doesn't help you when you're really sick. That's when the line is, is crossed or that's when you figure it out. It's like, it's like, why do you think everybody's intermittent fasting? They're intermittent fasting because they, 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 they didn't know it. No one knows it, not even so-called intermittent fasting experts, whatever you call that or whoever. It, it, they didn't know that you're taking fats out of your diet in the morning. That's why, but they don't say that because they think fats mean everything. It's like you need fats. But, they, but when you take your fats out of the morning, you just gave your liver a break. You just gave your blood system a break. You just gave everything a break. It's the fats in the morning that actually, they kill you faster and age you faster. And, and stop your brain from working. Why do you think everybody's intermittent fasting? They're trying to get their brain working for, for once in their life. And they're trying to get, and then they're jacked up on caffeine to be high on adrenaline to get their brain working. It's, you know, and so what you do in the morning is you keep your fats out and you do natural glucose. You do your lemon water in the morning, right? You do that. You do lemon water in the morning. That's what you do. You do the celery juice. You do the fruit smoothie. You do the heavy metal detox smoothie. Medical meme heavy duty, uh, medical medium heavy metal detox smoothie and you stay away from these fats in the morning i mean if you want to have bacons and bacon and eggs and toast in the morning and butter on everything i mean that's that's what takes you down fast the bad road because you're killing your liver and over time everything just falls apart and this stuff sits in the heart then there's no glucose getting there's no natural glucose getting to you to you like from fruits and everything anyway you guys i just made the meal i'm heading off to but first, you guys, Medical Meme Podcast at Apple Podcast. I'm going to be coming out with episodes pretty soon, but check out the ones that are there. The meditations. So Medical Meme Podcast at Apple Podcast. Check it out. It's a docuseries style podcast packed with information. Got the caffeine episode, apple cider vinegar episode, B12 episode, potato episode, neurological symptoms episode, anxiety episode, egg episode. It list goes on. Check it out when you can. Um, go to Apple Podcast. That's the uncensored version. And um, you guys, I love you much. And I'm going to go to Instagram and TikTok at the same time. And I'm going to let it fly. I love you guys. Take care.